People always want the next best thing. And they want it now. Us gamers, well, we might be just the worst when it comes to not having any patience at all. So, to no surprise to anyone, as soon as the latest Project Zomboid multiplayer update dropped and the Indie Stone started talking about Build 42, we started crafting memes. But due to teasers in the recent Thursdoids, it seems our long wait might be coming to a close. So let's take a look at the top 10 best features coming in Build 42 and why you should be excited for them. Let's start with the two I'm personally most hyped for. The first one is reworked lighting. You see, mood and atmosphere are two main building blocks that make or break games for me. And Project Zomboy does an amazing job at both of them already, but in build 42, the Indy Stone is taking them to the next level. So what we're getting is a new lighting propagation system, which is basically just a fancy way of saying that light now bounces off walls and leaks through windows and doors more realistically, which allows for more natural ambient light effects. What this means is that when the electricity shuts off in-game, you will end up living in a much darker and scarier apocalypse, where exploration of dark warehouses will require a flashlight even in the middle of the day. Dark zombie-infested corridors, spooky abandoned houses where an undead could hide in every nook and cranny, and truly a dark post-apocalyptic world? Yes, all that perfectly ties into my second favorite new feature, basements. With new tech comes new heights and lows, and while surviving the rooftops 32 floors above the street level, sounds like Rick's went dream, I'm personally more interested in burrowing deep under the ground Minecraft style. Granted, there probably won't be any jewels down there, but every so often you might find a diamond in the rough. So basically, the Indie Stone is adding permanent underground structures to the whole vanilla world. Some of these bunkers, basements and sewers will be ever present, so you'll be able to return to your favorite post-apocalyptic hole in the ground in every playthrough. But most of these basement locations will be randomized to add flavor to the map. Naturally, most of them will be dark, damp and infested by the undead, but if you can keep them safe, they could make for an awesome secret base. Also, I can't wait for some crazy modder to bash together 5 underground levels worth of sewers spanning the length of Louisville. I'll go down there into the dark where I belong and never see the light again. But where the light does shine are the new locations added to the vanilla PC world. The Indie Stone announced a huge map update, focusing more on the rural parts outside of the already established areas. They're adding 3 new towns and multiple smaller map locations. Naturally, none of these will be as densely populated as the giant Louisville area that was added in Build 41, but they'll add more unique and flavorful places to visit and survive in. But not only are they expanding the world of post-apocalyptic Kentucky, they're also reworking and upgrading some of the older towns and areas, like the OG Muldra. They recently showcased pics of refurbished Muldra Police Department, the primary school area and the local church, which now all look dope AF, if I may say so. They've also shown us a reworked Twiggy's bar and the improvements made to the Knob Creek Hunting Lodge. So naturally, I'm very excited to explore the new areas of the game, as well as visit old familiar sites that might get a fresh brush of paint in Build 42. But now let's take a look at features that might just allow you to stay alive forever. The Indie Stone wants to provide a way for multiplayer servers to run indefinitely, allowing players to craft, build and scavenge every single thing they'd need to build a thriving society in a post-apocalyptic world. First of these features is a new take on crafting. We're getting a whole slew of new crafting machines that will take you all the way from primitive Stone Age style furnaces to advanced electrical machines. You'll be able to learn new skills including pottery, metal forging, metal weapon crafting, stone working and brewing. Pretty much most items that exist in the game now will be able to be crafted, although the quality of them might significantly depend on your personal crafting skill. That's why this new crafting revolution will work best on big multiplayer servers, where people will work together and specialize in certain professions to benefit their community. They've shown us multiple work in progress UI features accompanying all the new crafting benches, and they've shown us many of the said benches, furnaces and machines and naturally their end products. If you look at some of the new crafting trees that we've seen, you'll realize the insane death Project Zomboid possesses when it comes to a simple thing like crafting a bunch of nails. And there's no wonder it took the devs a couple of years to get all this right and ready for our use. Another use we'll get out of the new crafting system ties directly into building. Previously, we only had wooden planks and logs to work with when building a base, and to some extent metal plates as well. Either building from scratch in the deep forest or improving a pre-existing house, you didn't have much choice or many options what you could do. But now you'll be able to use stonework 
looking to build a stone age shack in the woods, or go further and make some cement, then craft some stone bricks, or maybe push it far enough, you end up mixing concrete and pouring reinforced concrete walls for zombies to bash their heads on forever. I feel like for people like me who love to just chill, craft and build, the new crafting system is going to do some amazing shit for us, and I already have plans to build my dream home in Project Zomboid, because we all know YouTube ain't paying my bills to be able to do it in real life anyway. But just like I do in real life, we'll be waiting knee deep in manure soon enough. In build 42 you'll be able to take care of a variety of domestic animals including sheep, chickens, pigs and cows. You'll want to protect them from roaming zombie hordes and nurture them as they grow from cute little cuddly critters into your long term chance of survival via milk, eggs, meat and leather. But rancher life won't be the only way for your long term self sufficiency. Tracking and trapping of wild animals will get a whole lot more interesting, as instead of set it and forget it traps that exist in build 41, you'll actually be able to encounter wild animals in the forest like deer and rabbits or rats having a party in your trash can. The animals will migrate following their pre-turned paths in the deep woods, and it will be up to you to embrace your inner hunter if you want to keep up your hopes of rebuilding society back from the post-apocalyptic stone age. But if vegetarian stone age life is your dream, then the farming update will suit you well. While not quite on the level of the new farming sim, which I'm fucking excited to play, crops will now behave more realistically. Gone are the days of garage potato farms or deep winter strawberries. There will be optimal months to plant your veggies, which will follow realistic growing seasons. You also have to deal with new snaily pests, so hopefully you raise some chickens to eat them. The crop variety will also be significantly expanded. You'll be able to plant, sow and harvest corn, peas, garlic, barley, flax, industrial hemp, hops, rye, sugar beets, sunflowers, tobacco and various herbs like rosemary, in addition to the current plants. Naturally, with such a huge overhaul of a core survival mechanic, some of these things might take a while to get used to. But luckily, the Indie Stone is including many new sandbox options, where you'll be able to control exactly how your new farm will, will feel like in-game. Alas, this is still Project Zomboid. To even get to the cozy and chill farming and ranching part you'll need to survive, and you can't spell survival without new weapons and their parts. Or I guess you can, but it would be pretty hard killing hundreds of angry undead without a proper slaying tool. Lucky for you, with the new crafting system comes many new ways to craft new and old weapons alike. The best murder tools will naturally come from blacksmiths, but you'll also be able to use welding to make makeshift weapons, as well as good old sticks and stones to break zombie bones. In build 42, the amount of weapons available will be more than double of what we have right now, which includes broken weapon parts like baseball handles, guitar necks and snapped blades. Some crafted items will now track separately the condition of their handles and heads and their sharpness, giving a much bigger variety to looted and crafted items, giving you a much greater reward for being a high level crafter. Of course, this also means we'll have to deal with a little bit more of an upkeep and maintenance, as weapon handles might break and need replacing, heads can dull and need sharpening, or might get stuck inside of a zombie or even worse, break completely. In short, there's a ton of of new weapons coming and I for one am excited to break them all on squishy zombie heads. But there's something in build 42 that the squishy zombie heads can break. Tall fences. Previously if you had a tall fence all around your base you were cozy and safe and no zed could touch you no matter how many tried to squeeze their ugly faces through. But with a new build comes new danger and I love it. Not all zombies will be pure intellectuals anymore, figuring out pathfinding through a labyrinth to get to you. I mean this is America we're playing in, dying doesn't suddenly make you smart. So in accordance to the general US IQ levels, the Indie Stone decided to convince zombies to slam their faces against tall fences instead, and if you ever see a big group forming, you better do something about it before they do something about that fence. You'll be able to tweak or disable the setting in sandbox as well, so don't fear that it will ruin your perfect base plans, but also it will take a lot of zeds and some considerable time for them to bring the walls down, so you'll have time to respond to the problem and be able to deal with it accordingly. Also in accordance to previous builds, the Indie Stone are slow incorporating more and more popular mods into the game itself. One I'm really happy that is getting some love is improved base vanilla mod manager. It's a small addition that will make playing with mods simpler and much more straightforward for the average user and I'm all for that. You'll be able to change the load order of enabled mods and then share your preset with your friends. If your friend lacks a couple of mods, the game will tell them what they're missing and point them to the Steam Workshop. They've also reworked the mod IDs which caused many a headache on multiplayer servers, where people couldn't log in when a certain mod 
updated, forcing the mods to restart the server over and over again. That shouldn't happen anymore, which will make playing with huge mod packs in multiplayer a much better experience. And in general, playing Build 42 will be a much better experience altogether, simply because they're adding a ton of new pieces of clothing, items, vehicles, lore drops and a whole lot more. Big props to devs for their hard work and thank you all for watching.